how long would it actually take to make one of the most popular styles of Game Maker games? Not just a prototype or for a game jam, but a real playable Horde Survivor game with bosses, progression, a story, an upgrade system, and even some Easter eggs. Well, it turns out the answer is something like 24 hours. I've had this idea sitting on my desk for a while. It's just a really popular game to make in Game Maker. The way the engine handles event-based scripts contained within object instances, it's basically made for this kind of game. So when the fine folks at CraftPix sent me an email suggesting I use one of their free asset kits, I already had a plan. You can actually grab the same assets I used. There's a link below if you want to check them out. At first, the idea was to make just a quick speedrun tutorial in under an hour, but once I started building the game, I couldn't stop. So I decided I would turn it into a 24-hour challenge run. And even then, I went over by quite a bit. That's because there's this idea in game dev, a rule I'll admit I don't follow as often as I should, and it's called follow the fun. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let me start at the beginning. This is how I made a Horde Survivor game in 24 hours. Now to start, I'll be honest, I didn't keep live split running. This wasn't like a rigid time challenge, but the 24 hour limit gave me a deadline, and that helped me focus on scope and scale. From there, I built out a rough project management plan. Six sessions, four hours each, spread out over the course of a week. I could then break down the elements I wanted to include in the game, and plan what I could reasonably finish during each session. So we have the basics. I knew the game needed a player and enemies and bosses. Since it's a Horde Survivor game, it also needed different weapons and some way to upgrade them. That would mean progression, and the whole thing needed to be balanced enough that it still felt enjoyable to play. Since I already had the assets from Craft Picks, I used the first session to upload all the sprites and build out a basic foundational kind of prototype. The player could move, different enemy types would spawn based on enums, you know, nothing fancy. Just sort of a basic canvas we'll spend the rest of the time building off of. The next four hour block was spent building out weapon and enemy variety. In these kinds of games, I've always found it satisfying to have multiple weapons with distinct strengths and weaknesses. A shotgun that eats through enemies at close range, a sniper rifle that pierces through crowds, and some kind of overpowered late-game crowd control weapon that's great for small enemies but ineffective against bosses. I wasn't trying to balance everything perfectly, but I was trying to keep in mind how these weapons might work into a leveling system that I'd build later. On the enemy side, I focused on how I could add some variety to the gameplay. I added infected enemies that spawn parasites when killed, and giant queen enemies that were like bullet sponges. So now that I had these different enemy and weapon types, I needed a way to display them. The main UI screen is just the most visible part of the game, so I needed to start working on it so I could polish it. In the third block, I built out a health bar, an XP meter, and a basic system for switching weapons. And yeah, with the health bar and weapon icons in place, this game was starting to feel like it actually had some structure. The fourth block was the halfway point, and it still felt pretty incomplete, so I knew I had to add some polish. I built cutscenes and transitions using black and white fade-ins, then I reused objects and swapped out their behavior to simulate simple story moments between levels. I didn't really have time to develop full dialogue or story, so I kinda just went with the art style and made this like, ack ack speech. It's basically ripped from Mars Attacks. Or let's say, a loving homage. I also swapped out character icons from the asset kit to simulate some sort of progression between levels. So you get a message from the boss you're about to fight, that sort of thing. That concluded block four. Time for block five. With the core gameplay loop in place, I built an upgrade system for the space between levels. After each boss fight, players earn tokens based on their XP. Each weapon is represented by an icon, you click one to level it up. For this, I just reused the same icon, scaled them up, and used them to spawn tile objects. The upgrade system actually worked well. Maybe too well well, because that's where I started to deviate from the schedule. So I kinda put in a little easter egg. If you fully upgrade the starting pistol, it transforms into the most powerful weapon in the game. I don't know if this is like an official game dev trope, but in Ninja Gaiden there's this weapon called the Unlabored Flawlessness. I've always really loved that idea, and I try to sneak something like that into my games whenever I can. That little detour brought me into block 6, the final block, sort of. I had already gathered some sound files from stockmusic.net during my off hours, so I just had to load them in, assign them to the correct events, and make sure they were wrapped in a global toggle so players could mute audio whenever they want. This is going on itch after
after all. Then I just wrapped every step event in another global for a pause screen. Not pretty, but it works. So technically, yeah, I finished the game in 24 hours. It had everything I set out to build. Enemies, a story, a weapon upgrade system, and just enough polish to make me feel comfortable uploading it on itch. Oh, by the way, it is live on itch right now. Links in the description if you want to play it. But I wasn't done just yet, because I was actually having fun. So I kept going. I finally did the testing and balancing the weapons so sorely needed. I added tutorial hints and made sure the upgrades felt powerful and meaningful without making everything feel totally overpowered. Well, except for the unlabored flawlessness, that one's broken on purpose. And as much as I loved working on this game, you know, we set a deadline for a reason. Every project has to come to an end so you can take what you've learned and move on to something bigger and better. So that's what I did. I uploaded to Itch, I took a week off, and I came back to the game with fresh eyes to make a list of things I'd improve in the future. First, I'd definitely add a better tutorial. The learning curve right now is a little steep, especially for casual players. The background textures could also use more visual variety. Maybe I'd convert them into a full tile set. There's one included in the Craft Picks asset Kit I used. And while the cutscenes are fun, I wish I had been able to integrate the story more directly into the gameplay. Like, maybe destroying portals would unlock words in the Martian language, gradually revealing what's going on. Kind of like how No Man's Sky handles language learning, I always really liked that. But with all that said, I'm still proud of how this one turned out. Like I said, it's live on itch right now if you want to give it a go, and if you do, I would love your feedback. Unless you're just here to say this game's been done a million times, I know that. I still wanted to make my own. And if you want to see how I I built the prototype, I'll be releasing a speedrun tutorial in a few days that shows you how to make your own. You can also grab the Craft Picks asset kit I used, again link below. One more time, huge thanks to Craft Picks for reaching out, and yeah, I'm not sponsored or anything, but their tools fit perfectly into this project. So with all that, I hope you found this a little educational or a little entertaining. Thank you so much for watching, please remember to like and subscribe, it really really helps grow the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.